Today, I'm gonna to show you how to create this really smooth modern navigation reveal animation utilizing HTML, CSS, and JavaScript with the help of the GreenSock animation platform. So let's get started. If you enjoyed this video, check out designcourse.com where you can learn UI, UX, CSS, and more with my custom interactive platform that makes learning fun and easy. Alrighty, let's get started. So basically, I uh, here we go. Let's take, take a look at it one more time. Uh, we click this, uh, it, it shrinks down and we have a overlay that kind of comes from the top that darkens everything. And then we also have this navigation that comes in. Uh, we click it, it will completely reverse that entire timeline based animation from GreenSock. And there you go. I, I would personally have more interactions like hover states here, but I, I wanted to keep this pretty simple. You know, for instance, like having like a, a hover state for this icon when we hover over the hamburger menu. But you know, again, that's gonna take a long, a lot, 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 lot longer. So. Um, let's take a look before we hop into code. I, the Figma document that I have set up and I, this is just the general idea I came up with initially here. All right, that's it. Basically that's what we came up with. And then right down here, I, it's nice to have a plan of attack when it comes to trying to figure out your HTML scaffolding essentially. Um, if you don't get that part right, then you know, the CSS won't really matter or the JavaScript. So basically the idea here is these red boxes are just kind of representative of our main HTML containers. Uh, so we're gonna wrap everything inside of uh, a container, a div element called layout, a class. Um, and then this element right here, if you notice the hamburger menu, what it does, if I click over here, uh, this is annoying, okay. I, if I click on it, notice how it changes. I'm gonna zoom up. Um, oh, my zoom tool is not working, great. Uh, if I click it, just notice what happens to it. Notice how it does not get dimmed out. It, it actually, it changes from black to white. Uh, with that said, we want to ensure that it's able to break out of the the box model essentially and so we're going to make this position fixed with a high z index and then that overlay is going to be underneath it additionally um, this element right here which is going to be an h1 element will be wrapped inside of a parent container called inner a div element uh, and then we'll this layout element is going to have position relative and that's to make sure that this element still will scale in or scale down i even though it's position fixed, but adding position relative on the parent element will still make it basically adhere to whatever's happening to the parent element. Um, so and we're, we're gonna be scaling it down by like 5% on click. Um, and then over here, uh, once it actually comes in, there's an overlay element that's kind of just initially hidden on a, we're scaling it on the Y axis and then scaling it all the way down 100%. Um, and then our nav element right here is gonna be position fixed as well. We'll be able to sit it on top of all this stuff. And that's basically the general idea. So let's go ahead and stop talking and start coding. Okay, so here's the, the starter uh, the starter portion. And all I am, in, am doing is just, I have two scripts where in, in, oh, I don't even need the scroll trigger. Don't need scroll trigger. All we need is green sock animation platform right here. Um, I'm gonna do a code pen for this. Check out the YouTube description. You can grab all this stuff. And so let's go ahead and just start writing out the HTML uh, structure for this project. So let me get out my reference code and we will start to rock. So remember I said everything's gonna be in, in a element called layout, there you go. So we got our layout element right here. Let's go ahead and zoom up nice and big and beefy that, so you can see everything that's happening. Next element inside of layout is gonna be that hamburger menu. So we're just gonna say, uh, we're gonna wrap it in an A element. It's not going anywhere, but it will have a class of menu so that we can reference that in CSS and JavaScript. Now inside of there, we're gonna have an SVG element, and I'm just copying this from Figma itself. Again, if you don't know how to do that, you just go over here, you take this sucker, right click, copy as SVG, and that's exactly what I pasted here. All right, I'm not even removing width and height. It's perfect as it is, I don't even care. Uh, that's that's that part now so after this part inside of the layout after the menu we're gonna have inner remember we already talked about this h1 and then I'm just gonna go ahead and just copy and paste this there you go and then finally we're gonna have our overlay that will come down and just darken everything with uh, an opacity on it um, after that outside of layout 
we're gonna have our nav element. And again, that's gonna be position fixed or absolute would work as well. Unordered list. And then we're gonna do a list item. And I want these to animate like this. So let me show you real quickly the final version. If I go over here, click this. Notice how they kind of, I uh, they, they come from nowhere. Yeah, they're, they're kind of sliding up from nowhere. We're gonna wrap them inside of a mask element. So we type in mask. And inside of here, we're gonna have our A element and then education. Then you simply shift alt down a few times like that and you know, just change up the, the verbiage here. So I already have that off screen, so there we go. Entertainment, enrichment, excitement. I don't know why I stuck with all E's, but it was cool. So that's that. Now we're gonna have our script, uh, we have our script import. Before we get to that, let's go to the CSS though, because it is completely blank. Um, and I'm not gonna write all this from scratch. I'll just kind of briefly summarize what's happening here. So we have our body element, which is margin zero, get rid of that. Height, 100 viewport height, just because this is a simple demo, I wanted to fill out uh, you know, everything, the, the, the entire viewport. Font family, B Vietnam Pro. <laughs> it's actually a cool font I found today. I, and I'm importing with Google Fonts right up here. All right, and then just a background color of like gray. After that, we're gonna have our layout. So remember that's like our first element inside of the body element. The background's gonna be white. The height's 100 viewport height. Again, this height viewport 100, 100 viewport height wouldn't work properly if it wasn't also on the body element. And then remember, position relative for that hamburger menu. All right, after that, let's take our um, H1 element and just doing some fluid type font size. We're using clamp here, font weight, width 50%, margin zero, nothing special there. We're gonna take also our menu element is position fixed, Z index 10, and then a padding of 25%, and then we're just doing a little bit of like re fluid responsive stuff with the clamp. Uh, let's see what it looks like at this point. It's not gonna look correct, so here's our actual version that we have. Okay, so this is what we have so far. Um, things are looking dark and yada, 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 yada. Um, oh, I'm sorry. I was wondering, how do I get to that point actually? This is what it should look like at this point. Sorry, I wasn't watching the SAS file, so it was loading the old file. Okay, so we're almost there, but don't worry, let's just keep on going. Uh, we're gonna have as well our nav element. The nav element I uh, has a fair bit of stuff in it. So position fixed, Z index, I have 100. That's so it's just gonna be really, nothing's gonna interfere with it. Right zero, so we're positioning it, we're right aligning it. Top zero, width of 55%, height 80 viewport height, display flex, align items, end. Very simple stuff, nothing crazy happening there. We also have the unordered list and the mask and stuff inside of this nested. So we have list style none to get rid of that stuff, overflow hidden for the mask for the animated text effect. And then list items A, so we're selecting each link right here, like this, and we have a display block, padding, just give some white space between them, font size, text decoration, you know, nothing nothing crazy happening here. So that's all we need for our actual uh, CSS. And if I go over here to our demo thing and we refresh, ooh, 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 ooh nothing changed. We just make sure that I, let me shift F5 this. Yeah, because something is not right. Well. Oh, yeah, that's why. Sorry about that. I thought we were done, we're not. We just have two more. We have inner, padding 30% here, clamp, and then overlay, position fixed. Um, you can notice that we're having pointer events none so that we can still interact with the elements from this the dark overlay that falls over it. Um, transform origins top, because we want it from top to down when we do the scale, and with this right here, if we save it and we go back I, to here, this is what we have. Um, so by default, we don't wanna hide this with CSS because if JavaScript is disabled, then it will just be permanently hidden. Uh, we can use a uh, green sock uh, to set that position initially. So now let's go ahead and switch over to JavaScript. So I'm gonna go ahead and paste in a number of uh, variables that we're going to define. So the first one's gonna be the menu button. So we're just selecting the class of menu right here. The next one is gonna be layout. 
I, and that's selecting the overall layout that's wrapped around almost everything. Another one's gonna be the overlay. So remember, we need to control the overlay so we can scale on the Y. Menu SVG, I, we want to, to access the SVG path element right here in order to change the fill from black to white. That's what changes the color. Additionally, we have menu, uh, I'm sorry, we have menu items, and this is gonna select all the menu items so that we can, and we're using GSAP utils to array. You could also use document query selector all, but this is a little bit more handy because it does some behind the scenes stuff, essentially, that makes it easier to deal with them. All right, so first thing also, I forgot to also include let menu open equals false. All right, so we're gonna, we're gonna store this Boolean value of true or false in menu open um, just to let us know if the menu is currently open or not so that we know whether to play the timeline animation or reverse it. So now let's do our GSAP sets. So we're gonna set initially the overlay to a scale Y of zero. So now when we save this and we go back, we'll see that if I refresh it, now the overlay is gone, all right? Additionally, oopsie, let's go ahead over here and let's also set another value. That's GSAP set, menu items. And remember, menu items is right here. It's grabbing every link in our unordered list. And by default, we want those to be hidden uh, from the mask. So what's happening is we're gonna take this A element, each one of these, and we're gonna move it up outside the view of the mask. And because the mask has this property right here, overflow hidden, we won't see the links anymore. All right, so what we'll do is Y percent 100. You could also go negative 100 as well by putting a negative if you want it to come from the different, a different direction. All right, so coming back here, again, we don't see anything yet. Uh, before there was white links here, but now there's not uh, because we just hid them. Okay, so let's go ahead and create our actual timeline. And to do that, we're gonna create a constant called navtl, gsap timeline. We open up an object. This part, all this stuff is optional. You just wanna create you know, a, a default timeline, but we wanna create uh, some defaults here. So then inside of this object, we put another one with defaults, and then we set the ease to power four and out, and then a duration of one. Again, not, this doesn't do anything in and of itself. So now we actually have to create the timeline-based animation referencing nav timeline. So the first one that we're gonna do is nav timeline. We're gonna use the to method. You can also use from and from to. We're gonna use to. And so we're gonna say, we're gonna take our layout and we're gonna scale it to 0 0.95. So if I save this and I go back and we look at the results and we just refresh, it's gonna scale it automatically without me clicking anything because I haven't yet paused the timeline. So we're gonna pause everything at the end of all these chained two methods that we're about to do. Um, and in that way, we can just click the button and then just call the play method. Okay, so we'll leave that here for now. So let's keep on going on. We're gonna take uh, our overlay so our overlay, if you recall, is, is the dark element that is currently hidden at scale Y. It's not hidden, it's just like so thin you can't see it, it's at zero. And it's at the top. Well, we say scale Y one, because remember we set it to zero. And then this right here, this optional parameter, uh, we just have a, 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 a comma, and then this is saying start a half second sooner than you would otherwise. Because if you leave this off, each one of these chained animations or these tweens will wait for the one that's before it to finish in order for it to begin. But this allows you to, to, to either add time with a plus, subtract time, or if you want it to happen at the same exact time, use a less than value like this. All right, just a quick crash course in the timing of things. So now if I save this and we go over here and I refresh, look at that. Okay, very cool. Next up, we're gonna change that fill to white on the menu SVG element, so fill white. So watch what happens now. So if you go back and we refresh, notice how that changes right there. So pay attention to the hamburger menu. 
And this right here starts exactly at the same time as this overlay coming down because we use the less than sign. The final one that's gonna be a part of this, this final animation, is our menu items. So remember, menu items is an array, and we're gonna set each one of these to Y% percent zero. So that's gonna take it right back to its default position because remember, we're setting it to Y% percent 100 up here. So stagger is gonna be 0 0.1, so a tenth of a second between each of the, the menu items that it found, the list items. Um, and then we're making a duration two, and then we're also making it start 1.5 seconds sooner than it would normally. So now let's go ahead and save this, go back, and let's see what this looks like. Nice. Okay, at this point, we're just gonna pause it. Now, if we save it and go back, and notice it doesn't play anymore because we paused it. So now, all we have to do is this. I'm just gonna paste in this code real quick. So we take our menu button, we add an event listener of click, and if menu open is false, we play it and then set menu open to true. Else, nap timeline reverse, menu open is false. That's it, so we could play and reverse. And if we save it, we're gonna have the final end result, refresh, click it, there you go, click it again, reverses, so easy, so easy. Now, like I said, it would be much more cooler to have some uh, micro interactions when you hover over these things. Maybe you can do that on your own. Um, but yeah, that is basically how you create uh, a modern, very cool, very animated navigation. All right, everybody, make sure you subscribe if you haven't yet and check out designcourse.com and if the advanced front ends course, which is linked here in the bottom, is coming out fully releasing here in a month or two. We're gonna learn how to do this stuff and so, so much more from the beginning, from the ground up as a beginner. So um, again, I'll see you all very soon. Make sure to subscribe, goodbye.